Hey, Shocker fans. I'm uh, back in the shop making some ultralight milled SFT bodies right now. This is uh, one that I made a while ago. It's kind of a test version. Uh, so I've got three more. They're happening as we speak. So there's one in the machine right now that I can show you carefully. This is a Dynasty body. Will be done momentarily. I have right here an SFT body. This is this is what it'll look like when it's finished. This is a regular base model SFT. This is obviously half finished. Half of it's been modified, half of it has not. So what I'm gonna do now. Or I shouldn't say now, but what I'm going to do when this body is done, I have this one left. This is a strange SFT, which has a lot of material built up around it, uh, including this chunk in the back. These are uh, This piece is actually a separate component that SmartParts screws onto the body with a little screw that I took out. So the problem is, I can't get this thing off. I, I think it's uh, caked on there with some paint. <laughs> So I'm not going to be able to get it off. I'm just going to put it in there and machine it, and hopefully it'll fly off on its own. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, but we'll see what happens. So in case you're interested, this is a, a fairly easy process to set up because as you can see in the machine, I just have a little subplate, subplate that looks like this that I bolt the bodies onto one side of it, and then I just go. So I've just got a standard vise in the machine right now. I don't have to deal with any multi-axis stuff. Uh, when we do production work on bodies, normally we put them on a fourth axis and it rotates around. Uh, you've probably seen that. Oh, hey, it's done. So you've probably seen that in some of my other videos. As you can see, let me blow it off. So this one's all done. It's interesting how this stuff kind of showed through. Uh, I don't want to go any deeper. My my rule of thumb for making like cosmetics that are very thin like that is I go about a sixteenth of an inch so this wall thickness around the bolt bore is one sixteenth of an inch which means this little cut that was done from the factory is probably another uh, I don't know maybe one thirty second of an inch closer twenty thou thirty thou I don't really know for sure but all right, so I'm going to take this out of the machine and put the strange body in there, and then we'll start it over. You'll be able to see the roughing, which is pretty interesting. All right, see you in a second. All right, so I've got the strange body mounted into the machine. It's a little loose right now because I'm tightening this thing up, I'm trying to do it one-handed and hold the camera. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying earlier, this is, a, this is a pretty quick setup to do for modification on the shocker bodies because all you have to do is bolt them onto this aluminum plate that's mounted in the vise so there's not a lot of crazy fixturing that has to happen all I had to do is take this chunk of aluminum and drill some holes in it at the proper locations and then hold the body uh, the setup is obviously not very rigid because this thing is only being held by these screws uh, from the bottom so when you look at it you can see that it's got a, quite a gap in there so there's definitely more rigid ways to mount a marker body in a machine, but I don't really think it's necessary. This is how I do a lot of modifications on things, and that includes some, you know, roughing operations and things like that. So I don't think that... Oh, the screw's weird. So I don't think that... Uh, I don't think it's really necessary to go crazy with the fixturing and try to try to mount it from every direction because uh, this seems to work pretty good and in fact I've done very similar mounting operations on 4-axis stuff and on 5-axis stuff and it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, the only thing you have to do is make that upright plate. So it looks like this thing is in there in the correct position. Uh, really I believe I'm ready to go. So like I said earlier, I don't know if I can film this, but this little piece of material is bolted on uh, from the factory, so I can't get it off. There's a little screw that normally holds it on, and I took the screw out and I tried to, I tried to beat it with a little chisel and a hammer and some other stuff, and I can't get it off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the roughing operation, and hopefully it'll get thrown off on its own. Uh, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. The first thing that happens in the program.
God. All right, so the first thing that happens in the program is this tool. Oh, come on. This tool cuts away some of the unnecessary material from the front. I can't see a thing. All right, so. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do the roughing for the 3D milling. This is probably gonna be the most interesting part of the video because it's a pretty aggressive cut and it's gonna spiral all around. So what might happen is this little piece of material might uh, get like wedged in between the tool and the workpiece and it might actually break the tool. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I'm not really concerned about that, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to do this safely with the door open uh, like this. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, I did. So that's what's left of it. You can see the little spot where it was. Alright, so I'm gonna jump ahead. So the roughing is now completed. The machine just grabbed a 3 8 end mill, 3 8 ball end mill. That's what I used to do the, most of the finishing. Not all of it, but most of it. So again, you can see some of the stock milling showing through, like the strange cuts right there and right there. I think that most of it will disappear. Oh, there's a logo too, right there. Most of it will disappear from this tool here. There's a little chunk. Throw that out. This is going to take a long time, so there's going to be some cuts. How do you work this thing? There we go. about a half hour left or sorry about halfway done probably about 15 minutes left for this one side at this point I've grabbed another tool and the final cuts are happening on the side of the body this basically consists of the tool running down through the corners I'll show you so it runs down through these corners uh, to try to clean up some of the tooling marks that are in there and make them much more smooth show you. This section of the toolpath is a little bit more random than the other one uh, because the most of the finished pass was just slicing up the body and going side to side to side and this one it's actually following the contour a little bit 
but uh, it should be done here in a couple minutes, at least for side one. Then I'm going to flip it over and do side two. All right, so I just took the body out of the machine. This is that strange body. Uh, it turned out pretty good. You can see some of the some of the uh, milling up here on the top. I'm going to have to play with to make it blend from the left side to the right side. And obviously some of the stock milling did show through, just like that Dynasty. Uh, but like I said, I don't want to go any deeper than the 1 16th wall thickness, just to be on the safe side. Yeah. Okay, so this is the left side of that strange body. You can see I already milled it for uh, NXT eyes that did that earlier. So the milling is basically a mirrored version of the other side, but uh, it doesn't include some of the roughing stuff to get rid of this or the feed neck because that's already gone. So I, I am going to have to do some roughing, but it's all 3D roughing with that tool right there. So let's do it. Okay, so here it is finished, uh, or at least mostly finished. I still have to clean up, you know, some of this stuff here that's left over. Try to blend the left side and the right side together just a little bit. But all in all, this turned out quite nice. That's, uh, that's uh, a little bit of detail you can see. So I'm going to do these other bodies and then uh, we'll throw them all together. Hey, all finished. Here's the bodies that I had to do all laid out in front of you. Uh, I've got this uh, Dynasty here and then a base model. Here's that weird strange which had that piece sticking out the back. I'll clean that up a little bit and then this is a uh, not Dynasty, a uh, Shocktech NXT but the program is all basically the same thing and the fixture is the same thing so pretty easy to do uh, going from NXT to SFT. So the only thing left on these is that I have to I had to do a little bit of cleanup here on the bottom to try to round off some of these sharp edges. But that's it. The only thing, only thing really left is just that, that cleanup operation. Here you can see the detail of what it'll do. I don't, have a, I don't have another solenoid insert for that, but you can see how the insert sticks through. It's kind of a cool look because it shows the internals like that, but at the same time, uh, you got to be careful because if you get shot there, you're going to have to clean it, and it's going to be a hassle. But... That's kind of the risk you run with these bodies. So all in all, these turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with the finished product, considering that it's a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple program. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. But uh, besides for that, I think that's it. Thanks. See you.